Hi, I'm Danielle and welcome to Kids Club. I'm so excited that we can do this through video, even though we can't meet in person right now. And I'm so happy to have all of you here with me today. Today, our first video is gonna be about feelings. And just a little reintroduction, my name's Danielle. I'm the Youth and Family Advocate at New Beginnings, and I'll be hosting this series of videos for kids and parents affected by domestic violence. So parents, just that you're aware that there will be some language used around domestic violence, but it will always be kid appropriate and just related more to coping skills and tools we can use um, to become more resilient as people. So how does this video thing work? Well, first of all, just note that we are learning how to do this together, myself included. Um, as I'm sure many of you have, I've used Zoom a few times in the past few months, but this is the first time I'm trying this live video and recording thing. So there might be a few bumps and that's okay. We're learning how to do this together. And at the end of this video, I'll have information for how you can contact me if you do have suggestions, concerns, questions about how this might be more helpful to you. So please feel free to send me feedback. Be happy to make this work as well as it can with your help. Like I mentioned, the video is being recorded and will be available afterward on our YouTube page. So that URL will be available at the end of the video and I will also send it to you as well. Some parts of this video will be interactive, so you can participate if you want to, but you don't have to, that's okay. And you can use the chat function at the bottom of your screen to send answers if I ask a question or give ideas. And when I do share answers, I'll keep your name anonymous, just so that we're all safe, because this video will be posted on a public YouTube page. And like I mentioned, you can feel free to email me with additional questions or ideas after the video. I'd be happy to hear from you. All right, so let's get started today. Today, we are talking about feelings. What I have on the screen here is called a feelings wheel. You'll notice that in the middle, we have this wheel with different colors and different kinds of emotions. And then on the outside, we have all these different faces. And notice that their expressions are very different. Um, and I placed them to kind of match the words and the colors on the wheel. So if you can't read the wheel, or if it seems too overwhelming to look at all of that, just look at the faces. So take a moment, look at the wheel and think, how are you feeling today? You can say the word, to the person who's watching the video with you or point to it on the screen. And if you want to share it in the chat box, then you are welcome to. I will tell you that today, my feelings have looked like this person because I am nervous about doing these videos, but I'm also excited. So there's a little bit of this person and this person too. Oh, somebody is feeling happy. Well, that's good. Mm, and somebody is feeling lonely. Yeah, I totally understand that. I think it can be a lonely time for all of us right now. Anything else? Someone is interested. Oh, well, I hope that you're interested in this video. Anyone else? Okay. So it's important to talk about feelings because feelings are only something that happen in our head. You know, feelings affect our body too. And I think this is something that 
we have all experienced before, but sometimes we just don't take time to sit down and think about it. How we, these feelings do sit in our body and affect the way our body reacts and responds to different situations. So right now, we're gonna do a little activity where we think about how feelings affect the body. Here's our whiteboard. And bear with me as I draw a person. And you know what? The outline of this person is very squiggly, but that's okay. Can you tell that's a person so far? Maybe it looks a little bit more like a gingerbread person that got a little too spread out on the cookie sheet. Nah, that's all right. We've got two arms, two legs, a little bit of a neck. All right, here's our person. What we're gonna do is I'm going to name a feeling and then I want you to think about where you usually feel that emotion in your body. And it, you can have different answers too. Not everybody experiences emotions the same way. So if someone says an answer and it's not your answer, then tell us what yours is. Okay, how about we start with anger. Where do you usually feel anger in your body? Someone said cheeks, yes. Yeah, your face gets hot. The blood rushes to your face. Mm -hmm. Someone says heart, yes. Heart starts beating really fast. Yeah, I get that feeling too when I'm angry. My heart starts beating really fast. Mm -hmm. Anything else? Oh, someone says that when they get angry, their hands start to shake. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's talk about a different emotion. What about when you're sad? How do you notice when you're feeling sad? How does your body react? Crying, yeah, absolutely. I think that's a common response for a lot of us when we're sad. You cry, your tears come out, your eyes maybe feel hot or tired. What else? Someone says their chest. Yeah, um, I know sometimes when I get sad, I feel a kind of weight in my chest. Mm -hmm. When I'm sad, my throat also sometimes feels blocked up. Um, a lot of times right before I start crying, I'll feel this. Mm -hmm. Any other sad ideas? What happens when you're sad? Okay, let's try a different one. What about when you're happy? What about when something makes you feel good? Oh, I just did it. You smile, right? Not always, but sometimes when you're happy, you smile. Someone said they get kind of like a, like a fluttery feeling in their chest and stomach. Yeah. I feel that too. Any other ideas? Let's try one more emotion. What about when you're nervous or scared? Oh, someone mentioned their stomach hurts. Yes. Um, yeah, sometimes when we're nervous or scared, our stomach can hurt or we don't want to eat, you know, sometimes. It's hard to eat if you're really nervous. 
Oh, someone's saying that this is when their hands shake, when they get nervous, yeah. So for some people when they're angry, this happens. Some people when they're nervous, maybe both. Maybe that happens to you when you're angry or you're nervous. Your hands are really responsive to your emotions. What else? Oh, someone says, yeah, their heart starts beating hard when they're nervous. Mm -hmm. Oh, someone says their legs get shaky when they get nervous. Mm -hmm. Yep. I think many of us have that response. Yeah. Well, okay, let's take a moment and sit back and look at our person. Notice all these different parts of the body that this person notices their emotions. You know, it's not just something that is in your head. Your emotions affect your body too. And that's why it's so important to talk about them because it really shows up in the way you move around the world. You know, if your legs are shaky, if you can't eat, um, yeah. All right, well, thank you for sharing your ideas. We're going to shift back our PowerPoint here. Okay. We're gonna take just a few minutes to talk about some strategies to help yourself feel better. So first I wanna say that no emotion is bad, right? Um, happiness, anger, sadness, those are all good because feeling those feelings is what your body needs at that time. There's a reason that you feel sad, a reason that you feel angry. It's your body's way of trying to deal with whatever you're facing. Um, but some of those feelings can be uncomfortable when you're really upset, really sad, really angry. It can feel like your body is kind of out of control and you don't know what to do. So these are just some ideas to help yourself feel better when you do have those more upsetting emotions. And these aren't going to work for everybody, you know, just like with the feelings in different parts of our bodies. Some of these will work for some people and some of them won't, and that's okay. So if you want, you can try some of these and see what might work for you. Just noticing your feelings can be so helpful. So what we did at the beginning of this video and just naming how we were feeling today, that can be really important. Because sometimes you know you don't feel right, but you don't really know exactly what you're feeling until you sit down and think about it. You can try to write it out if writing is something that is helpful to you. You can do this in a journal or just on a scrap piece of paper. And it's okay if you don't know why you feel how you're feeling. You can just write it out how it feels, you know, my hands are shaking right now, my stomach feels sick. Just noticing those things and writing them out. For some people, getting active is really helpful. I know this can be a little harder now that a lot of us are in our homes a lot, but you don't necessarily have to go outside to be active. You can find ways to do that inside, whether it's just rolling around on the floor or maybe playing with your cat or your dog. Um, having some kind of active game with one of your siblings. Just a way to get your body moving. You can talk about it too. This doesn't mean that you have to talk to another person about it because I know it can be difficult sometimes to talk to people about how you're feeling especially if you don't really know right now, you're still trying to work it out. Um, so when you're talking, you know, you don't have to talk to another person. You can talk to your pet, you know, a favorite toy or stuffed animal, you know, just kind of having that non-judgmental audience to listen to how you're doing. You can draw your feelings too. So maybe you don't have the words for how you're feeling. That happens to me all the time. 
there can be these complicated, difficult emotions that we just don't know how to talk about or write about. So maybe you can just draw or color them out, you know? And it doesn't have to be what we usually think about when we think about emotions. Maybe to you, anger isn't red. Maybe anger is green, you know? This is just for you. So do what is helpful to you. This one can be really hard, but thinking positive, especially when you're really upset or feeling really negative, can help you bring out of that upsetting place. You can start really simply, just thinking about one or two good things about yourself or your life. They don't have to be big things. I put a, a hummingbird feeder outside my window and whenever I see a hummingbird come eat at that feeder, it gives me so much happiness. And if I'm having a hard day, I can think back to that moment and it makes me feel better. And think about things that are good about yourself too. You know, are you a good friend? Are you kind to other people? Do you do a good job of taking care of your cat or your dog? Some people like to listen to music. Maybe when you're sad, you like to listen to happy music. And maybe when you're sad, you'd like to listen to sad music. Whatever works for you. <sighs> Breathe. Because you do feel these emotions in your body, sometimes paying attention to your body first can be helpful. So just taking deep breaths. It can be as simple as taking a deep breath, counting to three, and then letting it out. So, Next week, we'll actually be talking about some more advanced breathing techniques. So keep this in mind. Stretch your muscles. Again, feelings are in the body. So focusing on the body, you can stretch and tighten, oh, and then release your muscles. And sometimes that can help get rid of some of the tension that's in your body because of your emotions. And again, this is something that we're going to talk about next week in more detail. Helping someone. You know, this one is something that works for me. If I'm feeling really upset or really bad myself and I can help someone else, usually I start to feel better. And again, it doesn't have to be anything big. You can make a sandwich for one of your family members who is working through lunch. Um, you can give a treat to your pet. You know, just doing something small and kind for someone in your life can help you feel better sometimes. Talk to someone you trust. So sometimes we all need extra help to feel better. If you were sick with the flu, you would go to the doctor. And sometimes when our emotions are really so heavy that it's hard for us to handle them on our own, we need another person to listen. And that's okay, that's healthy. So try to think about a trusted person in your life that you could talk to if you're having a hard day, or if you're having a really good day and you just wanna share something with someone you care about. Okay, you have a few minutes. If any of you have any questions, please go ahead and type them in the chat box. No questions? Okay, let's move on. So we're nearing the end of our video for this week. So I just wanna take a quick moment to review what we talked about today and how you can continue to use this lesson after watching this video. So something you can try is you can make your own feelings wheel and hang it up somewhere. You can use this maybe once a day, maybe you know, a few times a day, whatever is helpful to you to really just take a moment to think 
and notice how you're feeling. Um, I'm gonna share with you a moment. This can look like whatever you want it to look like. Here's one I made for myself. So, you know, the one I shared earlier had a lot of different emotions in the wheel, but it doesn't have to be that complicated. Here I just have a few simple emotions that I know I feel quite a bit. Um, and I made my own little cat faces on the outside to illustrate those feelings. Now at the top, I have a question, how do I feel today? And like I mentioned at the beginning of the video, I was feeling nervous today. And then there's a little reminder at the bottom. Why? Just to get you thinking about why you do feel those emotions, if there is something that caused it. And like I said, I was nervous about making this video because I wanted to do a good job and I wasn't sure how it was gonna go. So you can make your own wheel, you know, do whatever you want with it. You can illustrate it. You could use just illustrations if you wanted to instead of words or just words. It doesn't have to use color, whatever you want. It's for you to use. So make something that's useful for you. You can also start to think about what helps you feel better when you're sad? Or how do you like to express yourself when you're happy? You know, um, when you're happy, do you like to be able to have a friend you can go tell right away? Or is there a certain song you like to dance to to celebrate if something good happens? Just finding ways to really sit with and experience these motion, emotions instead of pushing them back and trying not to notice them. This is something that you can do on your own and also with a trusted adult too. So let's take a look at next week. Next week, we're gonna continue our lesson on feelings. Like I mentioned, we're gonna talk in a little more detail about some of those breathing and muscle relaxation exercises. So give you some tools to use those if that's something that helps you. So thank you for chatting with me today and making this video interactive. If you want to keep our conversation going, you are welcome to email with a trusted adult's permission, the Kids Club email listed here. You can share a drawing or activity you did related to this video or just something that you did that you're excited to share, as long as it's okay with the person the trusted adult that's helping you with these videos. This is also a place where you uh, or your adults can email a question. So if you had a follow-up question about something that we talked about today or something that came to you after you watched the video, you can email that question and then there's a time at the beginning of next week's video where we'll talk about those questions and try to answer them. And again, remember that these videos are recorded. So just make sure that whatever you're sharing is okay to be shared with the internet. And this recording will be posted to our YouTube channel, usually within a couple days. And I will also be uploading captions to the videos as well, which is why it might take a couple days to get up on the channel. But there's the link to our channel. Since we're a small channel right now, we don't have a handy, easy to remember URL. So I will also send this to you guys as well. And here's just some information about new beginnings. We have a 24 hour helpline. Feel free to call anytime. You don't have to be in immediate crisis. If you just need someone to talk to, that's what that helpline is for. And these are some of the services that New Beginnings offers. All right. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope to see you next week.